In this training video, we will review setting up food and beverage package templates and connecting those templates with proposals and invoices, as well as pulling them into leads and events. Let's go ahead and get started. From your home screen dashboard, we're going to actually start in the templates area. Note that if you have not yet watched through the video regarding the food and beverage item setup, you'll wanna do that before you start building your templates. From the templates area, we're going to click on food and beverage packages under our productivity templates. You'll see that you can create a variety of food and beverage packages, as well as add pricing, meal types, order types, and much more. Let's go ahead and start by adding a package from scratch. I'm gonna click add package, and I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding a food package. I'll enter my package name, choose the pricing calculation I'd like to use. In this case, I'm gonna choose the price per head. Enter in the price to add this package. Choose how I want the quantity to calculate. Since it's price per head, I'm going to make this calculate based on estimated event headcount. I can add a markup or discount, set a tax rate if it applies, choose a meal type, and add an order type. In this case, I'm gonna say on-premise service. And I'll go ahead and save my package. I'm now ready to begin adding items to my food package. I'm gonna do that by clicking add items from the top left-hand side of my screen, and I can start clicking to add things. Note that you have this handy filter right at the top that will allow you to search by a variety of things, including item names, characteristics, service style, and even category. So let's go ahead and start with hors d'oeuvres. I'm gonna go ahead and add my artisan cheese sausages and crackers. And if I have multiple serving styles, I can choose what type of serving style I'm going to use for this package. Let's go ahead and do butler passing. I think I want fried cheese ravioli. Again, butler passing, mac and cheese bites, quinoa bites. Let's see if I, I only have that available as a food station. Let's do the seasonal fritter and a couple other items. So I can, start by adding my quantity here. But if I'm not certain what my quantity will be yet, I can leave these blank as I'm adding them to my template because we will be able to update that once we pull it into a lead or an event. I'm gonna go ahead and click save to pull all of these items in at the same time to my package. Now that seems like a pretty darn good deal to me. So maybe they don't get all of these items, but they get a choice of these items for that price. We have a great way to control customer choices on this setup customer choices option at the top of my screen. And we're going to go ahead and select yes, allow customer to choose. And I'm going to say that in this package for $26 per guest, my guests can choose four of these appetizers. And I'll go ahead and click save. Now you'll notice we had some things update on our screen. It shows us zero of four are selected. That's perfect for now because we don't know who's going to select this package yet, and we don't know what they're gonna select. Once we pull this into a package, I will show you how you or your client can select the items that they want served at their event. There are two other pricing calculation methods that we still need to take a look at. Under the package price area, we're going to go ahead and click on the pencil to edit. We were just using our price per head, so let's take a look at the fixed price for the entire package. We can come in and switch over, but we do wanna change our price. So we'll say that this add-on costs a even $1,000 plus tax and click save. Now you can see that the price will be $1,000 regardless of which selection our customers make. In this case, we will want to go ahead and enter quantities so it's very clear to our customers exactly what they get of each item that they choose. So I can click edit quantity slash serving style and go ahead and enter in quantities. Note that changing the quantity is not changing our price because this is a fixed unit price for this package. Let's go ahead and click on the edit pencil once more and look at our final pricing calculation method which is going to be to calculate based on included items. Now this is an important point because it can be a little confusing. You'll see over here that even though we have multiple items and we now have a menu price displaying for those items, our package price is still zero. The reason for this is that we have customer choices set up and we do not have any items selected. 
Once we start selecting items, the pricing will change to include the price based on the items we have selected. Once you've completed setting up your food package template, you can choose to link this template with a proposal or an invoice template. From the setting on the right, click the plus sign and choose which invoice or proposal templates you'd like to link this with. Note that you can also link these once you've pulled a proposal or an invoice template into a lead or an event. So you don't have to take this step now. Once you have the item linked, you'll have a hyperlink to go and view that specific invoice or proposal. So when I click over into my invoice template, you'll see that I have multiple packages that are linked to the proposal or the invoice. You won't be able to edit these because everything populates from the food and beverage area out to proposals and invoices. So if I go under my actions menu, where you would typically see an edit option here, it'll actually require you to go back to the food or beverage package in order to make any edits. Now that we've talked about linking packages to templates, let's talk about how to actually bring these into leads and events. I'm gonna click on my leads from my main navigation menu. And we're gonna go ahead and add a new lead. Once we've added our headcount, we can move into a number of important places. The first option is to go in and create a proposal. We can bring in a proposal template with or without a food or beverage package. But let's go ahead and talk about importing a template with a food and beverage package attached. You'll see that we had a food or beverage package attached to this particular template already. Again, if I click on my actions, it will prompt me to go to the food and beverage package to make any edits. I can also bring in additional food and beverage packages by clicking on the food slash beverage package and going import food slash beverage package templates. Let's say I want to go ahead and add on the premium cocktail hour apps that we just created. And I also want to go ahead and add my basic open bar for the cocktail hour. Once I click save, these packages will not only be imported into my proposal, but they will also be available for me to edit within the food or beverage package. While you notice that certain packages are populating with pricing based on my quantity, my premium cocktail hour apps add-on is showing at $0. Let's take a look at why that's happening. I'm gonna click on actions and go to food and beverage package. The package price is based on the actual items included. And since we have not selected those items, our item price or our package price is showing at $0. So once we come in and select the items that our clients would like to have, it will calculate our pricing into both the food and beverage package as well as into our proposal that we've been working on. You can link back to the proposal right from here. Let's take a look at an event and how the food and beverage tool populates out to other areas of an event. From our food and beverage area, we can import a template. Once we bring in that template, we have the option to link it to our proposal and our invoice. By opening the package, we can click on the plus sign and link it right from here. Once we've linked this to our proposal and invoice, any changes that we make within the package will automatically update to those documents. Other items we can do from within a package is setting serving information. This is essential if you'd like to filter your BEOs by date and time or location. You have the option to add delivery information, pickup information, and additional notes if necessary. Across the top, you'll see you have a variety of ways that you can edit a package once it's within an event. You can of course edit the package name, meal, or order type. 
You can also set up customer choices, just like we were able to do under a template. You have the ability to change the default settings for the setup display. So if this particular package, you'd like to hide the pricing, you can do so here. Let's navigate back to the event dashboard and take a quick look at our banquet event orders so you can see how these populate into packages. For more information on the banquet event orders, make sure to check out those training and help videos or attend one of our webinars. Within a BEO, you can quite clearly see the different packages. You'll also see that the serving information and delivery information will show here. And here are our beverage packages we were just working on. As you can see, we've moved into the client portal. So we can take a quick look at how your clients can interact with the food and beverage tools within their portal. You'll note that right here from their home screen, they can click on the food and beverage tool from here or from the main navigation menu. Either way, it is going to bring them into their food and beverage package list. Now you'll notice we have a variety of packages in here and some of them do have customer choices and some do not. If they just want to review what they're getting for their top shelf open bar, they can view that here. Back in the food and beverage area, I want to take a look at the Concord package because this does have customer selections set up. So when your client is ready to come in and select their meal options, they can do so right here from the portal. This information will populate into your account as they select the items that they'd like to choose. Note that if they try to choose an additional item beyond the number allowed, they'll get a notification letting them know that no more selections are available and they'd have to deselect something else in order to select that item. It's a very simple process and all this information is communicated directly to you as they make the selections. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please reach out to us at support at planningpod.com. Check out our YouTube channel for additional training videos, youtube.com forward slash planning pod, or reach out to me directly with additional questions, training at planningpod.com. Thanks again for your time and have a wonderful day.